In today's video, we'll be looking at skin correcting or color correcting variations of hues on the skin using the hue and saturation layer with the help of check layers. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe before you leave. If you're old and you haven't subscribed, kindly make sure you subscribe like right now. Turn on the bell notification icon to get notified whenever I drop a new video here on my YouTube channel. And let's just get into today's video. Today's video is also a continuation of common mistakes I see when it comes to retouching and this is one particular one I usually see all the time and I want to tackle. I see that in beauty, I see that in half body portraits, full body portraits but today's fix you can use it anywhere you want provided it works for you. So I'm going to use this in this beauty image that I have shot, right? Um, when it comes to beauty images, you are telling the viewer that hey, whatever mistake you think you might see, I have seen it and I have fixed it. So make sure you fix every imperfection when it comes to editing beauty images. Well, you can't be too perfect, but you can stand it a step closer to making it look perfect rather than what you shot before. Today's picture, well made up, well lit, well shot. Kudos to the makeup artist, kudos to the photographer, which of course is me. What I have noticed so far when it comes to beauty images or all other images I see when it comes to beauty images is this. I'll show you real quick. So I'll pick up my brush tool, make sure everything is 100, pick a hard brush. Okay. Then I'll show you what I mean. Whenever I edit an image or a model skin with very good makeup, I always end up with these hue changes on the skin and somewhere around here too and here. Then mostly you can also see that you have different variations of hue somewhere around here too. These problems, which we call skin color correction, can be done in Capture One and I would have to take some mastery of skill to be able to identify these different changes because sometimes the makeup is so well done that you don't see these um, differences in hues but after you're done editing and you post, you get to see these um, changes. So today's video, like I said, I'll be highlighting how best you'll be able to, you know, make sure these kind of um, hue changes on the skin all look the same. The end goal of today's tutorial is to make sure that whenever you're editing and you have these changes in hues, you'll be able to match the hue you see here to this side and that side and that side. I have a video which I think I did the last two, three years or I should say last two years. I'll, I'll, I'll try and see if I can find that to do today in this video. So first things first, I'll pick up my lasso tool with a feather of zero. Then I'll make a rough sketch right so this rough sketch as you can see i'm trying to avoid some parts i am not going way in there i'm going just here right so i'm trying to avoid as much as of the shadow um, parts of the face as possible i hold ctrl g on the keyboard to duplicate the selection come back to the background layer and do the same thing for the skin so if you're fast enough you would realize uh, from the answer that the face looks different from the skin but to confirm that i'm just doing these th these two things to show you the difference in the hues of the face and that of the skin so hold and that explained quite a lot on how you will be able to match skin tones or skin colors in photoshop using different adjustments layers but in today's video, I'll show you what I usually do in this my updated version of or my improved version of retouching. What I will do is to make sure I create a hue check layer. So let's create a folder. Rename this to hue check layer, right? And under the, the hue check layer, the first thing you're looking at is to make sure we see only color and nothing else but color. So what we're about to do is to create a solid color adjustment. Make sure you're picking 50% gray or any neutral color can be white, can be black. I like 50% gray just to be on the safe side. 
change the blending mode from normal to luminosity and this blending mode makes sure that you only see the color and not and nothing else than the color so if i should zoom in you get to see the different variations of colors on the skin and also dealing with the saturation you can see this has more color than this side this is a different hue of color you realize that the background has ended up in gray just because it's in a neutral ground and doesn't have much color to it next i want to do is to make sure these colors are pronounced because you can't really tell if some parts has more color than the other am i right so let's create another solid color adjustment and make sure our brightness is 100 and our saturation is at 50 can be any other color you can you can change the hue to any other color right let's stick with this i usually like this all right so i'll turn tap on ok make sure i change the blend mode from normal to saturation to boost the colors now this is this is exaggerated form of the colors that were left on the set image when you use the first color fill so what we will do next is to create a solarized adjustment layer what the solarized adjustment layer does is it brings out every imperfection you see in your image so if you're going in for a print and you want to see if everything you're going to do or whatever it is you're going to print won't have any other imperfections um concerning or related to the image try and create a solarized layer and see if there are anything you need to fix before you print the said image so to create a solarized layer you need a curve adjustment layer then you create a zigzag with that so what i'm going to do right now is to move this up here right in between these two boxes then come here and bring this one down here then send this one up here and send this one down here all you need to do is to make sure that they all lie on the same line all right so i'll bring this down here and i'll send this up here so this is my solar rise this is my luminosity slider Lumin luminosity then we have a saturation layer so what i have created now is my hue check layer and after creating a hue check layer just take a look at the image you do realize there are some parts on the skin that have different colors or how should i put this you get to see that here has um, a more concentrated version of whatever color you're seeing here compared to what we see over here and what we see over here so when i turn off the hue check layer you realize that this side of the face has a blush which is related to pink let's take a look at the eyeshadow take a look at the lips take a look at whatever color you see over here take a look at the edges of the face which is closer to the hair if i turn it on you see these variations of color on the skin so what we are about to do is to use the hue and saturation layer of course we want to deal with the color not the saturation you can deal with both but today's video we are looking at how we can fix the said color and not the saturation so when when we mention what color we are relating it to hue so we'll pick up a hue adjustment or hue and saturation layer adjustment the hsl adjustment layer let me turn off the hue check layer for now and make sure we are on the right track so like i said let me turn back our helper layer we are trying to make sure this or these sides blending with the surrounding skin right so i'll pick up this and look for the appropriate side to which i'll be able to blend to make sure the skin looks or has an even color i can choose to pick this side or this side depending on where i want the work to be done so i don't want i i, I prefer this side because i feel like this side has more uh, concentrated makeup which has to deal with 
or whatever color I'm trying to fix. The next thing I'll do is to make sure I move the hues all the way to the right and the saturation all the way to the right. And as you can see, the selected range to which we've selected the color is where you see all these um, weird colors adjusting to. So right now we will be able, I'll, 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 I'll just make sure I refine the said range to which I want the selection to be done, right? So reduce the range a little bit. Let's make sure we feather it a little bit, not too much feathering. Then we move the range to where we want the effect to happen. If you move it all the way to the left, you don't have any blues in the image or cyan to the image. And when we move it to the right, you see, first off, we tackle the eye brows and I mean the eyeshadow and the lips and somewhere in the hair because it has this set color in it, this set range of color in it. Then we keep on moving to where we want our effect to to happen, right? And right about there should be where we want to tackle. So let me refine adjustments too much. Yep, this is the area we, we are looking at to make sure our variations in hue look the same. So next thing I'll do is to make sure this goes back to zero and that goes back to zero. Then I'll turn on my hue check layer. The next thing I would have to do is when I come back to the hue and saturation layer that we adjusted, I just have to make sure I am on the set range of colors that I did the adjustment to. Now what I would do is to move the hue slider just so that it matches overall on the said image so when i move it to the left just take a look at what it does to the image when i move it to the right this is how pronounced it makes the other colors look so you realize when i was moving it to the left i was having an even tone of color all over the said image right so if you take a look at this we now have this part of our face evened out let me toggle this off this is the before right you see the different brightness in the set color that's on the skin at the moment and when i apply the adjustments which we move the hue to minus 14 you do realize that these different variations of colors that you see are no more and they are almost evened out that should tell you that whatever color adjustment you've made whatever changes in the hue that you've made has been applied so let's toggle off our hue check layer and let's take let's just take a look at the before and the after the before and the after what do you guys think was this helpful did it was it to the expectation that you wanted this video to be is this something you would like to practice well i do this all the time when i want to match skin tones on my subject's face that's if i don't do that in capture one or even if I do it in Capture One, it's not as effective as what I'm doing here in Photoshop because in Photoshop, you can have what we call the hue check layer to guide you on the way to make this set change. What next I'll do is to just make sure I reduce my opacity because I just need it to be as natural as possible. In as much as I'm taking it away, I'm trying to fix the set problem. I'm not totally eliminating that set problem. What you can do also is if it proves to be in areas that you don't want you can just pick up your brush make sure you selected your mask change to black then you paint out from wherever it is that you don't want the set adjustment in the image you can also paint it in wherever it is you want the set adjustment in the set image and that is it that is how i go about fixing this set problem when i see them in any of my images that i edit I hope this has been helpful to all those who have faced this issue whenever it is they come to editing or who have who are yet to face this similar issue. So this is one of the common mistakes I see when it comes to retouching and I hope I've been able to educate you enough on how to fix that. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Leave me a thumbs up if you found this video interesting and you would like to see more of this video. Can you leave a question down in the comment section box if you have any questions at all. I'm going to leave my handle down in the description box also a link to my web store please go 
buy something from my web store support the business support the brother let's just give me motivation to make more videos <laughs> all right thank you so much for watching if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet like how you've watched this video and has been informative to you leave it leave a subscribe like before you leave just subscribe before you leave turn on the bell notification icon and one thing i really need you guys to do is to share my videos right share my videos just so that it can reach out to a lot of people and they can also learn a thing or two from this channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video Happy. peace